Welcome back to Focus on South Texas. We are talking with Dr. Charles Harden with Skilled Wound Care. Thank you so much for being here with us. Happy to be here. Well, tell us about your uh, company. What kind of uh, services do you provide? And uh, also, I want to hear a little bit of background about you as well. You bet. Let me tell you a little bit about myself first and talk about the company. It's very exciting. Uh, I worked uh, in the Air Force for 30 years as a plastic surgeon. Uh, during that time, I had the opportunity to work with many different kinds of wounds. I was a cranial maxillofacial surgeon, one that specialized in wound care for pediatric patients. And those pediatric patients uh, frequently had, had uh, wounds. I retired from the Air Force about three years ago and since then have been working with uh, skilled wound care. The founder of skilled wound care is Dr. Bardia Anvar. He's a physician that has his practice out in Los Angeles, California. He is a general surgeon. He was getting so many calls about pressure sores and wounds in the nursing homes that he felt that perhaps there was a niche here that he could uh, uh, fill. So he began seeing the patients that had um, wounds. He noticed that as the patients came to his facility to his office and whatnot, that this was a great stress on them and a great stress for the manpower of the nursing homes to package them up, put them in an ambulance and to bring them, them over. As such, he started seeing the patients in the nursing home themselves and found out that by seeing the patients in the nursing home, he was able to find out a lot more about the environment that they were in and the needs that they actually had and the things that were causing these pressure sores and was then able to uh, treat them more efficiently. As a result of that, he started the company Skilled Wound Care, which is still centered in, in um, California, Los Angeles, California. The services are available throughout the nation. They're available nationwide. And at the current time, they have about 50 physicians working for them in the group. How does that work with the patient getting in contact with your company? or? It's done through the nursing homes. Okay. The, the nursing homes enter into an agreement with the uh, with skilled wound care for us to come and uh, see these patients. And then the physicians that are taking care of the patients in the nursing home, if they want our expertise, then they ask us to see the patients. So we see them as experts in, uh, in skilled wound care. The advantage to that kind of arrangement is that we not only see them once, but we see them every week. We go in and see them every week. These wounds change very rapidly and they need very frequent uh, attention. You can't just put a Band-Aid on it and say, take that off in two weeks and it'll be better. Mm -hmm. uh, there are me it's become very sophisticated, the medications and the different uh, treatments that a wound can receive. And in order to move a wound through the various steps it goes through, you've got to be able to apply these at the proper time and in the proper way. And that's uh, that's one of the advantages we have in going out to the facility and actually seeing the patient in the facility every week. Do you see a lot of commonalities in the um, wounds that you treat? Or is there some type that are more prevalent than others? And the most common wound that we see is a what's called a pressure ulcer. When when skin is caught between a bone, if you will, and a hard surface such as a bed for a prolonged period of time, that cuts off the blood flow to that tissue. And when that tissue does not have blood flow, it will ultimately die and cause what is called a, we used to call them bed sores because they happen so often from patients laying in bed that can't move properly. We now call them pressure ulcers, but they're essentially the same thing. Those happen the majority of the time on the buttocks and on the hips or on the feet, mainly on the heels. Those are where the bony prominences come in contact with the bed or chair or whatever the patient happens to be sitting on. And how are you able to treat something like that? And what's the typical recovery time? I'm sure every case is different, but in general. Every, every case is different, but uh, there are some commonalities. Every wound goes through different stages of healing. I cannot heal a wound. Only Mother Nature can heal wounds. But what I can do is I can provide an ideal environment for that wound to heal. I know that the first stage that the wound is going to go through uh, is an inflammation stage. It's a cleaning stage. It's just like if I were to knock down a house, I would not try to build a new house until I had removed all the rubble from the old house. 
A sore is the exact same way. We have to remove all of the dead tissue so that the new tissue can come in and, and take its place. We do that through a process called debridement, which means that we're going to either using a medicine or with a scalpel or a curette, remove all of that old, uh, old tissue. Once we have done that, then we need to provide the ideal um, situation for the stage of wound healing, which is called proliferation. That's where the body wants to bring in all the nutrients and all the parts and pieces that it needs to, to rebuild. We do, there are many different medications that you can use. Different people respond differently to, uh, depending, on, depending on the individual, how they're going to respond. Once we get it through that stage, it goes to the maturation stage, and that is the stage where we want to keep the wound healed and give it a, give it a chance to become mature and toughened so that the wound won't, won't heal again. Is this something that you treat at the nursing home or at the facility, or the patients come to you? No, we treat them, we go into the facility and we go in once a week and the facility usually has a nurse, an LVN or an RN that has been designated as the treatment nurse. Mm -hmm. And we make rounds with that nurse every week. It's the same, the same nurse who knows the patient. We will then order the medication and the dressing and discuss it with the team, the nutritionist, the physical therapist if we need to, and the treatment nurse. And the treatment nurse is the one who then during the week we'll make sure that that treatment is applied. And if there is any problem, there's nothing magic about every seven days. So if there's a problem between the time we're scheduled to see them, they will contact us and we'll go and see the patient then. Are there things that people can do in terms of prevention so that they don't get to this stage? Or? Abs absolutely. You know, um, in our nation nowadays, there's approximately five million families that are taking care of, of parents or elderly folks. In the United States right now, today, there are three million people that are suffering from, from pressure sores of some sort. If I took the population of San Antonio and doubled it, that would give you an idea of the number of people that are suffering from pressure sores. And that's, that's increasing by about 63% every decade. Hmm. Uh, so it's not a problem that's going to go away anytime, uh, anytime soon. Is it something you see more with elderly people than... Absolutely, you see it with elderly. And the, that number 5 million, which I gave you, is increasing by 10% uh, every year. So as the baby boomers, as their parents get old, and as the baby boomers themselves get older, that population grows and these pressure sores become more, uh, more prevalent. Okay, what um, advice would you give to, to families? Maybe their loved one is battling something like this. What would you tell them? Prevention is key. The first thing that I would ask the families to do is to get a good primary care provider, especially with the more organized care that we have now. Our entrance into the, into the medical system is going to be dependent on our primary care provider. I can't tell you how many, how many elderly that I see every week that, that have high blood pressure, that have suffered a stroke, that have had coronary artery disease that went un, uh, untreated that left them in the condition where they're developing these, these pressure sores. So the first part of prevention is to get a good provider. The second part of prevention is to use the resources that are available to you. As, as these families and people try to take care of their older folks, they need to realize that they're not the first generation to have to take care of old folks. Uh, old folks happen every, gener every generation. Elderly happen elder every generation. And there have been systems of support developed for these people. They're usually accessed through a social worker, uh, and the social worker is accessed through your primary care provider. At home, in a very practical sense, you can make the environment safe, first of all. I took care of a uh, patient this morning who had been uh, scalded very badly by tipping over a hot cup of coffee. You need to be very careful that you would never give to an elderly person a, a something that they could burn themselves with because very frequently they'll drop things. The same way with the water heater in the home. Very simply, you turn the, water heat, the heat in the water heater down to a safe level so that the patient is not scalded by accident as they get into the, into the shower. Okay, um, just before we wrap, can you give us your website just in case people want to get in touch with you? All, you have, to, all you have to do is Google skilled wound care 
and you'll come up with skilledwoundcare.com, and I think there'll be all the information there you would need to get okay. in touch with the corporate offices. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Charles Harden. We appreciate it with Skilled Wound Care. We'll have all that information on our website. We'll be right back with your community calendar.